Hi guys, um, welcome to my channel. My name is Alyssa. I'm an artist. I live in Medina, Western Australia. I've got some really sad news. Uh, three weeks ago, my dad passed away. He was in palliative care at home and um, I was looking back over what I was doing. I was actually planning to do a video on um, journal, art journaling and sort of like putting, making ugly pages more interesting like going back over your sort of pages in your art journal that you're not happy with and um, tweaking them and making them look more interesting and yeah I think it's been a little bit of a blur but we're three weeks down the track and I'm just um, kind of living in both my house and mum's house because we're wanting her to be able to stay at home for as long as possible and um, yeah it's been a really hard time for her. But, um, it, and I guess I've just made like a conscious effort to try and dig into my art, even though I think at these times, as anyone who's experienced grief knows, like you, you're not in your best, it's because everything's so, I guess you're in this really liminal space as well, like you feel the feeling of being a bit lost and betwixt and between, um, your art can kind of reflect that. And I feel like, um, always I've tried to uh, treat my art as a soft landing pad where I can go um, no matter what's sort of happening I guess um, so it's been it's been really interesting so I just really wanted to touch base and let you guys know what's going on and um, yeah it's sort of a lot of changes in the next little while but I'm definitely going to um, keep up with with this because I've finding this is a really nice anchor for for me and just a place to be able to share my art as well. Um, when Dad Dad was actually really wanting to go to Hungary, he's actually, the name Kanich, my uh, maiden name is Kanich, and his, um, he really wanted to go to Hungary because he grew up in the Bahamas but he never um, really visited Hungary where he, his dad, his my grandpa was from and um but he never got there which is really sad and i remember at the time because i was feeling a bit like this is overwhelming for me to come along because um i i get i sort of get heat intolerant and different things like that and low energy and things like that so i was reluctant to commit to a, a big trip but i did explore a lot of the stuff in in my artwork i remember i did like a i was looking into um, Hungarian costume and I guess I've been looking around at all my artwork sort of seeing little reflections of dad and that's been really helpful in my grief just to um, look at that so you know someone who's impacted you over so much of your life um, so yeah there was a real pocket there that um, a lot of my artwork was focused on Hungary and always I guess when you're looking at funerals and organizing for a funeral and um, just after somebody's passed you go through old photos and you know old photos can be such a good um, artistic prompt I guess um, to draw from so yeah a lot of that's come out in my journals even while dad was sick I was we were sort of looking at a lot of photos and things like that so um, that's been really good it's actually been something I've done with my mum because um, we started a little journal together just with old photos and just telling me family stories that I could write down for her and things like that. So a lot of her old photos have turned up in my sketchbooks as well. Um, so yeah, I wanted to make this video just because um, I I think it, it was the artwork that I was doing just right up um, just before dad died. I guess I wanted to put that out in the world and um yeah and just um share all of that but I just wanted to let you know the context in it because um yeah dad was very sick and so we were pretty much a, around the clock right at the end um and I honestly don't know how I managed to get out and I think I was just like um diffusing stress really when I was going out and doing my art I was um, diffusing a lot of stress but suffice it to say I guess I wanted 
to have some sort of positivity as or well, not positivity but I, I wanted to just kind of keep it real I guess because it is a really good activity and it's um, I'm not lost in the the metaphorical value of what this art activity is because it was all about um, just going over old artworks that you're not happy with or that you know are sitting there and and making them new and fresh and um, taking them to a different place so I guess in a, in a metaphor it really is that's a, um, a lot of where I'm at it's like there's a lot of sort of picking up things in my life and taking them into a different direction and um, yeah I, I think there really is I, I guess I'm going to go a bit woo-woo here, <laughs> sorry. Um, that when we're looking for spiritual messages, I think that when we um, surrender ourselves to art and just making marks or whatever it is because it's not um, logical and it's not um, – it's really accessing that part of ourselves that is our inner world – I think that because of that, you can really hear the voice of spirit if that's what you're looking for and searching for. That's what I've always been searching for. So even when I'm not aware of it at the time, when I look back on things, it's very much there. It's like um, it's like reading between the lines of life or it's like, um, you know, this presence that you don't really realise is there in the moment when you look back at your artwork and your journals and what, where you've been, if, if you do journal, um, you can see the voice of spirit in that. So if you do art journal, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, maybe definitely keep your old art journals and look back over them every now and again because um, they will be, they're revelatory, I guess, in nature. They reveal things about um, spirit and what spirit's saying and how God is with us in in it all and um, I I use writing sometimes but more often for me the immediacy of putting paint down or crayon or scribbles is more um, achievable for me so and, and I guess just for the way I'm wired so anyway it's a bit of a hodgepodge this video guys <laughs> but I hope you enjoy it and um, as always just yeah keep painting and it, yeah just whatever you're going through if you're going through um, grief yourself or um, you know physical illness or limitations of any kind um, just know it's like a safe harbour and there's no judgment and um, yeah, God bless. Anyway, bye. Okay, so I think my idea was to show you through my very sort of scrappy, um, just working out ideas, brainstorming sketchbook where I, I just, a lot of the pages are really unfinished and scribbly, um, mainly to show that, you know, a sketchbook is a working document and it's a place to brainstorm and just put down ideas and you know oftentimes we see um, sketchbooks that are so finished and beautiful and that it can kind of feel like it has to be very make you think that it has to be very precious and it really doesn't um, but what I do tend to do is within that like say for instance this page here I tend to look at this was um, very unfinished I, I think I used ink tents on them on these pages to start with um, and then I just went over the top of them in um, some paint and some um, Neocolor one crayons and it just brightened them up and it I guess it makes me feel a bit happy when I look at them because they're brighter pages than before um, so I guess that was my idea for this activity was to look back over old work and um, just kind of judge it up I guess for lack of a better word make it a bit more um, finished and sometimes your original idea um, comes out a lot clearer when you do that um, so there's like a work so I'm just showing you through these pages because they really are they're very experimental 
and um, there's a real place of acceptance as well because I think it's so unrealistic to think that everything you do has to be finished and kind of perfect and I mean unfinished drawings it goes against everything we were taught as children that we have to finish everything but um, but I think that's part of the creative process because we're just um, learning as we go, as we put marks down, we're solving problems all the time. So yeah, a lot of them are little dreams that I've sort of done, um, ideas that I've written down and um, sort of to formulate pictures and paintings that I've done, old photos. Yeah, this little dream, dreamscapey scenes, and um, that was a Hungarian village. So yeah, they're they're a working um, document, I guess. I'm, I think I'm going to tackle this one because it's um, leftover paint, and I don't know what I was doing with it, um, or even that one. So a lot of leftover paint and. Um, I like to just uh, create interest using like textures or whatever and it's just really loose and even this one I could make that a lot more finished. So I'm going to take you through the process of that. This is just um, printed out uh, music paper that I'm using just to put some interest down and you, you really don't see very much of it at the end but I feel like it adds a little bit of, um, you know, a more robust kind of uh, substrate to work from. And I'm using um, ink, I'm not ink tents, sorry, um, Neocolor ones, which are not water soluble, and um, just my Josonia paints, which are um, opaque and they're sort of very gouache like, but they're very, um, they're not very expensive which is really good to work in journals with. There's a lot of um, push and pull <laughs> with this. I change my mind and then change my mind again. Um, and um, yeah, here I'm ripping off paper. So yeah, it's it's all just uh, learning and experiment in the spirit of experimentation, I think. Um, and it's really okay to change your mind and renovate things. I always do it. And it actually adds interest um, to the end piece because you get like bits of this red color. I don't know if it does come through at the end, but potentially it can, like all the layers add extra interest that can come up later.
At this point I'm fairly happy with it and um, so I always use up my old paint in a, another art journal or a canvas or something like that and it gives me something to respond to later on. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs>